Hey, everybody. Good morning to you. How are you? So I'm up early because Booger is up early. Of course, she's up early. She's a cat. <laughs> and they love the night, don't they? Cats love to be up at night. They love to get up early in the morning, wake you up. And then when you get up and start running around, then they go back to bed. That's just how it is when you're a cat owner. <laughs> but you know what? It's a good thing this morning. It's a very good thing. It's right on time because guess who dropped another video? Booty. And the title of the video is called, I'm going back to Canada. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm reserving my happiness until I see it actually happen. Because Foodie likes to change her mind. You know, like one minute she's feeling one way and she's going to do something. And then five minutes later, it's completely different. I've learned over time that with Foodie, or rather Froddy, because we call her Froddy over here. Uh, with Froddy, you just have to wait and see that something has actually happened to know that it's actually happened. Until that happens, there's the there's a potential for her to change her mind. So in the video, she talks about going back to Canada, that she's not feeling well. She's going to go back to get treatment, possibly surgery. Although, Froddy, I don't think you're going to be able to get that surgery, girl. I really don't think so. First of all, you don't have the money. Secondly, you got a problem with food. And the doctors, if they're going to do that kind of surgery on you, they want to know that that problem has been squashed and dealt with. And they're not going to give you the surgery. And then afterwards, you're going to vomit or rupture your stomach. Thinking that the surgery is going to fix the problem, it's not going to. Because all the surgery can do is make your stomach smaller. But it cannot tame the bee monster in your head. So if you're looking for a quick fix, that ain't it. But never mind that. Uh, she talks about how being in Kuwait, going out during the day gets her overstimulated. We'll get into that when we get to that, okay? Let's start with Twitter first. There's only a few things on Twitter that I wanted to show you. And then after Twitter, I want to show you a very brief clip, courtesy of the channel GirlTube. Uh, because it's going to be something that's going to, uh, words, it's going to be something that's going to happen again when she gets back to Canada. I wanted to show you guys an old clip of the villa before she started living there and then after she started living there. So let's start with Twitter. Let's get that underway. All right. So those of you that are on Twitter that you want to join me on Twitter, it's Wild Girl Sarah. So Cowboy Dog says Chantal says she won't share her marriage certificate with random internet strangers. Yet we are your therapists. Stop and pay us per session. Right? <laughs> right? I mean, if we got to sit there and listen to her for like two, three, four hours at a time, we should get paid. All of us should get paid because that's what therapists do. They get paid to listen to people. And then after they listen to them, they tell them this is what you need to do. So if the therapist is getting their bag, why can't we? <laughs> if you're going to dump all your problems, make it worth our while, Froddy. So Katie says, be on the lookout for rainbow colored loaded teas, a.k.a. Herbalife. Yeah, Chantal yesterday talked about getting involved in some kind of business venture and going to a seminar. There are different companies over in Kuwait that they're basically MLMs, like little pyramid schemes. and Foodie's always tried her hand at getting sponsored or promoting different products, and they never work out. Never. And any companies over there that, like Valentis, that it's weight loss related, I don't think she'd be a good representative. Because Foodie is good about gaining weight, not losing weight. So how would she be a good representative of a company that focuses around health when she's destroying hers? Hmm. Anyway. Uh, next. Oh, this is something so cool. Look, I just want to show this to you guys. There's nothing fraudy related. This is beautiful. Look, look, look. A kitty. Okay, no new music. The kitty's in the snow playing with the snowflakes. Oh, that is the sweetest thing. Oh, bless that little thing's heart. <laughs> She's so precious. <laughs> okay, this is another one from Cowboy Dog. Saying, remember, she said she's been doing something that helped with her energy. 
Some people mentioned Valintas, an L um, MLM popular in Kuwait. So here's information about the company. Valintas with products like energy aids, weight management items, and slimming coffee. Valintas has quite an assortment of wellness products in Kuwait City and Hawali. The company has an unmatched compensation plan that goes hand in hand with their goal of helping their members to prevail in the network marketing world. With a relatively new leap into the network marketing world, Valentos took the leap and ran, succeeding from the very start with no sign of slowing down in 2024 for Kuwaiti reps. Yeah, MLMs, it, if it's like anything like Herbalife, the way they make money is they recruit people. And then if you're a person and you want to make money in a company like that, then you have to recruit people and that they are under you and you get a, a share of whatever they make. But Foodie's not a good salesman. She's not a good motivator. She's lazy. She's a procrastinator. She doesn't want to do anything. So how would she succeed in a product uh, as company like that? Even just straight up promoting her products on YouTube. Who's going to believe her? How is anybody going to buy any kind of weight loss products for somebody who's gaining weight? Make that make sense. <laughs> okay, this is a good one from Nana Spike T saying, too bad her self-reflection never sticks. I say it over and over. She's only lying to herself five years later, and she's still on the Hot Mess Express. Yes, ma'am. And not only, is she, not only is she on the Hot Mess Express, she's driving the doggone train right into a wall. But let's watch the clip from Chantal, or Fraudy, and this is dated April 29th, 2018. I just want to cry because I, I really wanted to hide it. And I was like, today, I was like, why am I, this, you can't do this. This is, it's a dishonest journey. You're lying. You're lying to yourself more than anyone else. You're lying to yourself. You know, addicts are liars. Addicts are liars, manipulators. You know, you can all say you need help. You need to see a therapist. You need a dietitian. You need a team of people to help you. But all of that doesn't matter if you can't help yourself. If true. True. Absolutely true. Haven't I been saying that though? That foodie could have a team of the best doctors and specialists surrounding her, ready to help her. But until she's ready to surrender and say, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm completely in over my head. Until she's ready to surrender, they can't help her. Nobody can help her. She's got to help herself first. You can't be floating down the river of denial. You got to get off that boat and get on land and throw up your hands and say, I surrender. I don't know what I'm doing and I'm going to seek out others for help. Let them be in the driver's seat because I'm driving my, this car right into a wall. I don't get it. I don't get this. It's insane behavior. It's insanity to keep doing it. I'm insane. I don't even myself fully understand. Food. Well, the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results. So yeah, you're right. You are insane. Because you think that you are in control. You think you know everything. You think you've got things under control. Clearly you don't. If you're well over 500 pounds, close to 600, your health is failing. You have no mobility. You can barely breathe. Just walking across the room wears you out. None of that is normal, foodie. Absolutely none of that is normal. People have been screaming at you and telling you, get your butt in inpatient. Just do it. That is the one thing that will help you you won't do it because all you could think about is YouTube and your YouTube views and engagements and, and the YouTube money, honey, none of that's going to matter at the end of the day. If you're in the ground, you know, a lot of people they've come to me in the past and they said, you're, you're being far too nice to foodie Rose, far too nice. Why are you so nice to foodie? Oh, I go off on her when I feel like it. But let me explain my weird crisscross with foodie. I am someone that I've also dealt with BED. Like this whole thing is not about me, but I'm just explaining my point of view just so we're clear. So I've been on that side of the fence where I've had BED and I know how awful it can get. Foodie's problem with BED is far greater than mine ever was. I caught mine and it took me six years to deal with all of it, but I dealt with it because I realized I had a problem. And I was looking for the solution. I never stopped looking. She's never really looked for it. So I've been on the attic side of the fence. 
I know how awful it can get. But on top of that, I've lost someone to rugs, my own sister, my half sister. Let me tell you something, foodie. If you are an addict and you're going through your addiction, yeah, you're going through your private hell. But there are people around you, they're suffering too. They're suffering. And if something happens to you, those that are around you that care about you, they're left to deal with the loss and the sadness. And if you're in the ground, you can't stop their sadness. So if you care anything about your family, you'll stop this madness and turn this thing around. If you don't care, well, we know what's going to happen and you know what's going to happen. So you're at a crossroads. Whether you give an F about yourself or not, you're an awful, evil, disgusting, despisable person. You are selfish, self-centered, vain, narcissistic, soulless, heartless, all of it. Like every word in the dictionary, this negative describes you. You are the seven deadly sins wrapped into one body. For that, you will have no sympathy for me. When I'm reacting to you, like I've got that weird crisscross of being somebody that I've been on the side of the fence that you're still on. And I've lost somebody to addiction. And I know how awful that is. So that part of me comes out, you know. That that human humanity part, like right? I just don't want to see somebody die. Even as somebody as despicable as you, like the humanity in me just comes jumping out. You know, you have to care about yourself. You have to care before anybody else cares. You can't get on YouTube and dump on all of us. Your problems are your problems. If you care enough about them, you'll solve them. If you won't, you'll just go on and make them get worse. And if they get worse and something ultimately happens, it's all you're doing. Every person born, you are the captain of your own ship. You drive it where you want to. You drive it into the rocks or you drive, uh, you sail it to new and exciting places. You keep taking your ship onto the rocks and crashing it. And you can't blame us for it. Anyway, I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> I'm talking it this morning. Okay, let's go on. Let's keep going. On to Wonder Mom saying, do we all remember how Foodie Beauty was not even able to keep her coldest water bottle sponsor happy? I mean, all she needed to do is drink from it and tell people that it's amazing. And that was too much work for her. So who really believes an MLM will work out better? Yeah, I remember the whole thing with coldest. Coldest water bottle, once upon a time, they were after everybody with a channel on YouTube. I mean, you had a channel on YouTube, they throw you a water bottle and say, promote it. We'll sponsor you. And Foodie was one of them. And she has the distinction of being the only person, the only content creator that got fired from coldest water bottle twice. Twice, y'all. Because she's a bully. And people told them that she's a bully. And they decided, we don't want that associated with our brand. And they let her go. And how did Foodie handle it? Foodie... Instead of just accepting things gracefully and keeping her mouth shut and being professional, she got on her channel and blasted coldest water bottle. And let me tell you why that's a really dumb idea, foodie. Because a big company like coldest, work gets around about who to work with and who to avoid. And if you present a very unprofessional attitude, well people talk, you know, people with the money, people with companies, people that are looking for representatives of their brands and their companies, they talk. Yeah. They have lunch. They make phone calls. You know, they, they talk to each other. Your unprofessionalism might've cost you more sponsorships. But then again, you don't need to represent anybody's brand. All you do is just bring trouble. All right. So that's it for everything on Twitter. So let's go on. I want to show you guys something right before we get started with the React. This is something interesting that I found from GirlTube. And I'm going to leave a link for the video in the description. 
this little clip, let's see, this small clip is, this, is, this was Fodi's villa when she moved in. And there's also clips in here of after she started living there, like how filthy and disgusting it got. For anybody who might be a VIB, that you weren't around during this time period, you're going to see why everybody in the reaction community, why the reactors were so ticked off at her. Like the environment that BBJ and Sam were living in. How Foodie decides to live herself is her business. But when you have, say, children or pets in a filthy, disgusting environment, have them living in a home with mummified food, fruit flies, rotting food. We, remember, we all remember the blue pot, the infamous blue pot with the mold. That happened more than once. Garbage on your floor so thick that you have to use a garden rake to rake it up. That ain't normal. Y'all going to see, though. Just real quick, uh, let's play the clip. Well, I'm going to keep the sound off. Well, I'll turn it off for a minute. Okay, so she's showing the apartment. Like she's showing the balcony area. This was the balcony area. Okay, what else? Come on, foodie. And by the way, the villa upstairs, right across the hall from her bedroom, there was a washer and dryer that never got used. She was surrounded by dirty, filthy, disgusting clothes. And there was a washer and dryer right there. She also had a dishwasher that barely got used. She had all the fixings in that house. Plus, in that apartment complex, there was a pool that she could have used to get healthy and a free gym. Like, you couldn't have asked for more. She talked about using the gym when she first moved there. That never got used, ever. But she's showing off this apartment like they just moved in. It was perfectly clean. She's talking. <laughs> yeah, it has like shelves in it. <laughs> That's so cool. I have a built-in dresser, place for a TV. Probably the one. Oh, a little side note. So how they came to be in the villa wasn't because of foodie. It was because of Pete's. Because at that time, Chantal was dealing with bankruptcies. Uh, she wanted to live in a nice place, but she didn't have proper credit. And knowing that, she went to Pete's and said, let's move in together. And the deal is, you put your name on the lease, and I will pay the rent and the bills. And he was okay with that. He was actually looking around for a place within his budget and every place they looked at foodie did not like she's like i'm not going to live in those dumps so she wanted to live in the villa and so that was the agreement that he would offer up his good credit and put his name on the lease so they could both live there and she would simply pay the bills and the rent in, in exchange one downstairs would go good there the vents they're nice and quiet. Um, so I got this today, this little bath mat. This is my own private bathroom. Hello. I look like oh sorry about that. Go good there. Sorry about that. I messed up. I was clicked the wrong button. So sorry. <sighs> that was when she first moved in. Look how she looked then. Looks a whole lot different than how she looks now, doesn't it? Hello, I look like crap. <laughs> um, so vanity mirror, my mom got me this. Sink, towels, toilet. <laughs> um, just a standard bath, bathtub. You know, of all the areas of Foodie's house, the bathtub stayed the cleanest because she never used it. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm not even making a joke here. That was the case. She never used her shower. I've been shower, but clean nonetheless. And a medicine cabinet, which does fit the thin. She's showing off all these things like these are brand new things to all of us. Oh my God, a medicine cabinet, a shower. <laughs> like nobody else has a medicine cabinet 
or shower in their homes. I, I'm pretty sure we all do have those things, Booty. Thinner rolls of toilet paper? Yeah. All right. So that's my bedroom right now. Mind if I film your room? Sure. Going across the hall here. In this room, we have... And there it is. There is the washer and dryer. So there was no excuse for her to have dirty clothes. Dryer, washer, dryer, mm -hmm. hot water tank. Yep. And like, okay, blah, blah, blah. Showing all this stuff. Now we're going to move forward. Y'all see the house that you can see by the stills. The house was clean. Okay. So keep, th keep this in your head. When they first moved in, this place was spanking new. It was sparkling. It was clean. It was hygienic. And then we're going to move on to, that's what it turned into right there. Look at that. That's what it turned into. Okay. And she tried, listen, she tried to blame this on being depressed, but let me tell you what's funky about her depression. She claimed depression, but yet the moment that Natter called, she would immediately jump up out of bed, rub some lotion on herself, put on some body mist, put on her negligee, put on her clothes, and jump and go out the door. I'm sorry. If you're depressed, you can't do that. You really can't do that. But she did it. So she tried to blame all of this on her depression. And there were many people in her chat and even people that were reactors at that time that were telling her, Look, if you can't clean or you don't want to, just hire a couple of maids. They'll straighten all this stuff up. Her excuse was, I'm too embarrassed. I don't want anyone to see my mess. And yet, Miss, I'm too embarrassed to have anybody over. The only way that that room got clean was she had her mom and her sister come clean it up. Can you imagine being in your late 30s, having your mom and your sister come and clean your room for you. That's what they did for Foodie. But look at all the mess. Look at this. My mind and emotions were a mess. Then just hire a maid and get it straightened up. Look at that. That's what the cats were living in. That's what ticked us all off it wasn't just her alone living in this mess it was the cats but look at that wigs on the floor mess on the floor disgusting you could not walk a straight path from the door into a room she's just a filthy filthy person and although she blames depression for what's going on here just something of note for those who do not know once upon a time when she lived with BB, she started hiding pizza boxes and she was just so filthy. Uh, she was hiding the pizza boxes in the house to the point where there was a cockroach infestation because of her. It just seems like filth and vermin follow her wherever she goes. But look at that, wigs on the floor, boxes, just, it, it was nasty, nasty. Look, what did I tell you? Look. Look. And she put this on YouTube. She thought this was cute. Now all of it is gone because her mom and sister cleaned it. Look, look how, look how many garbage bags for one room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's how much garbage was in there. Insane. There's BBJ and Sam. Yeah, her, her that that was before that was before she really decided to make it make it filthy. That's what the cats were living in. That's what ticked us all off. Look. Like, there's her room right there. 
there there's there's a room where they had that the litter box so you can tell that it's all cluttered there's cat poop on the floor that nobody picked up and Pete was there all the time he could have cleaned up a little bit he never did I'm, I've got the sound off because there's music and I'm not sure if it's copyright But look, th this was the entrance to Chantal's room right here. Too much. This is why the reactors were mad. Why the audience was mad. The place was filthy from top to bottom. There were like multiple... Uh, box mountains everywhere. Look, look, filth. Look at all those boxes. Like two people living together. There's no reason why it should have looked like that. Her family came in and had to clean all this up. There, This is the part I was looking for right here. This was BBJ's feeding station. Look at it. Look. Does that look acceptable to you? No, it ain't. And thank you for posting that girl too. But I will be posting a link for the original video in the description. So now that you guys have seen that, how about we go on to the going back to Canada video? Because I've got so many thoughts. Yes, I do. I absolutely do. So let's just go and find it. All right. All right. So we're going to get started with the, the react. So if you need to go and get your snacks, get your coffee, get your tea, eat breakfast before we get started, you might want to stop the video here and go do that. If you're all ready to go, then I guess we're going to go. So let's go. Hey there, Beezers. Oh, what about you just have a. No. It's. No. Hi, this is birthday or special occasion gifts nobody cares about your scammy old fraudy hope to hear from you bye hi this is editing okay we're starting out the video already being manipulative she's got that low sad i am so sad voice showing a picture of the hospital this is to make her vibs and her subscribers worry. Just immediately, right off the bat, I'm, she's going to grab you up with a picture of the hospital. And that, I'm so sad. I'm really bad, y'all. She knows how to get people. She knows how to manipulate people. Foodie beauty here. So, um, I'm editing. And uh, since I... Uh, made this video since I filmed it. I talked to Salah and I made the decision that it's sadly probably better for me to go back to Canada for a while uh, to seek some much needed medical care. And You know, this whole thing with her being a Kuwait and I'm married, we all knew that it was going to end sometime. It couldn't go on forever. Foodie's income is going down. She can't afford to sit there and pay Salah huge gobs of money. When she got him that car, I thought that has to be a final gift. Because where do you go after a car? I mean, she started out with the smaller gifts, right? The, the watch, uh, the, then the iPhone, the computer. Uh, now we've got the car. Like the gifts that she's been giving him have again been getting progressively more expensive but where do you go after a car if she doesn't have the money for a house or a mansion i mean once you buy someone a car even just lease them a car where do you go from there so that kind of felt like a goodbye gift to me like fulfilling some sort of a agreement between them like 
I do this for you and you do these certain things for me before you leave. But you had, you, we knew you had to go back, Foodie. And Foodie is not one to admit defeat. You know, like she starts an arc and she has to find a way to bring it to a close without looking like a fool. So this is her out. This is her saying, I'm sick and I have to go back to Canada and I need to see treatment. Notice there's no talk of the marriage ending. But that will probably happen once she gets back to Canada and it's going to turn into a whole drama thing. Anyway, let's go. And part of that is I want to talk to a doctor about possible weight loss surgery. No, I'm sorry. I got loud. No, foodie. No, no, no. WLS is not for you. Because weight is not your only problem. You've got a problem with food. What's the doctor going to do about that? He can't reach inside your head and take that monster out. There's nothing that a doctor can do to fix anything mental or emotional. Scalpels can't touch emotional issues or psychological issues. Knives can't touch them. That's why you need therapy. All the surgery can do is make the size of your stomach smaller. But the monster is not in your stomach. It's in your head. Hence why you need the doggone therapy. You need it. You need it desperately. Or you need to be in an inpatient where other people can tell you no. And they have control and you don't because right now you're out of control. You need to surrender if you care if you care about life you will surrender if you don't care about life well you'll end up beneath the flowers and the grass um and psychiatric help you know proper diagnosis all that proper medication uh to get my diabetes under control as well certain medications for diabetes and also the surgery of course is um covered in canada so um also i just feel like i need family when i'm going through some of these hard times you know when you're sick you always want your mom <laughs> so um other than that nothing you know I so what's the plan are you going to live off your family because if you go back to Canada, where exactly are you going to go? Are you going to stay with family? I guarantee you, if you act up, they're not going to put up with you. Because they don't have to. They're, they're your family, but they're not your caretakers. Don't think for a minute that you're going to go home to Canada and turn their entire house into your content room. They've had a year plus where you have not been there. And I'm sure they have been loving the solace and the peace away from you. If you bring that YouTube attitude into their home, they're gonna say, you need to go, go get a motel room and stay there, do what you gotta do. But if the plan is to live off your family, you might wanna forget all about that. I don't think they're gonna put up with it. Miss, I'm gonna miss my family here greatly. I'm going to miss my husband, my love very much. He won't miss you. <laughs> he won't miss you, foodie. He's been aching to put you on that plane. Oh, I'm sure he's aching to put you on that plane. Listen, when you have a newly married couple and within the first year, they're spending more time apart than together, that is a bad, bad bad sign and Salah is at the point now with Foodie he doesn't want to come on camera with her at all he doesn't want to show his face he's barely around that's his signal Foodie that he's done with you he's sick of you he's over it he wants you to go home the moment you get on that plane he's gonna celebrate He's going to throw a party in that little Oceanside Villa. Oh, yeah. There are going to be some visits to the Red Room. He's going to be living it up. You're going to be sad and crying. 
because you can't talk about the handsomest man because he's not there. But he's gonna be having a good time. He's he, he's like he can't wait. He's like, like what are you leaving? <laughs> Sal is over there saying, "What are you leaving? Can we can we get you packed up right now? Can you go now?" <laughs> But it's just a lot, and I need to be in Canada to deal with these things, as I realize. So um, I'm not sure when, but someday I will just be in Canada, and you'll see me there. Wait, what? Someday I will be in Canada. What does that mean? Someday. Are you doing that on purpose so we don't know exactly when you're leaving Kuwait? Are you playing that game, foodie? Trust me, nobody cares your exact date of when you're leaving Kuwait. I've already seen things online saying that you have to leave in January for another visa run if you run for a visa. So we're already into December. It'll probably happen before January or maybe in January because of that, because your visa will be up again. Maybe you have to leave because you having diabetes Kuwait having their policies regarding people with diabetes and you unable to get yours under control, they're like, you got to go. You can't stay. We're not going to approve you. And that's why you're trying to make up this arc of I'm going back to take care of my health. Maybe it's not about your health. Maybe it's about the fact that you're in another country and they're saying you can't stay here. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. All right, until I can get my health under control. I can't escape it anymore. So, bye. Enjoy the, the video. Here. All right, here it is. Cottage cheese, well fat, with mustard and carrots. Baby carrots. Um, question, is, is that a thing? Putting mustard in cottage cheese, is that a thing? I've never heard of that before. It just seems rather unusual. I'm not trying to be uh, judgmental or anything, but is that a thing? I've never seen anybody but foodie put mustard on cottage cheese. Carrots. Mix it around. Ew. <laughs> cottage cheese is very expensive here. So you'll complain about the cost of cheese and cherries, but you'll buy cottage cheese. Even though it's expensive. Make it make sense. Mmm. And I never used to like it, but now I love it. It doesn't hurt my stomach. It doesn't, it's not salty like the other cheeses. It's like $8 for a 16 ounce container of cottage cheese here. And how many containers do you go through a week? Just asking. But I think it's an imported product, so. What can you do? <laughs> so I'm going to eat this with some water, and then I'm going to go to the doctor. So I'll see you soon. Bye. Hello, beautiful girl. What are you waiting for? You know, I... Hold on a second. I wouldn't put, I would not put it past foodie to sit there and like deny herself food just so she can get her blood sugars down low or as low as possible and then go to the doctor's office. And as soon as they take the reading, when they're done, stop by a fast food place right away to get her fast food. Just try to manipulate the readings to act like she's healthy when she's actually not. Mm. Oh, hope you feel well, baby. I don't believe that. I don't believe that she's three sixty six. No, 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 I don't believe it. No. 
Like the, the numbers kept jumping up and down. What were you doing down below, Booty? Were you messing with your feet? Were you like standing on like the like the side of your foot so it couldn't get an accurate reading? You figured out some trick to where that reading wasn't accurate. I don't believe, ma'am, that you're 366 pounds. No. That would mean that you're at a lower weight that you were when you were with BB. And anybody could go back through your channel or the archive channels, look at the way you look then versus how you look now, it's not the same. According to your logic, you should be smaller now than what you were five years ago, and that ain't the case. So you're just a big old liar. Hey guys. So, um, gonna try not to cry but I'm in a really um, weird mood um, I'm so depressed like I'm um, coming back from the doctor first of all being out in the day like this in the sunlight makes me worse depressed I hate it like what what all did she do today like she got dressed she took the elevator down to the front entrance got in the car Salah drove the car to the doctor's office she got out walked inside got treated walked back outside got back in the car went back to her house none of that was strenuous none of it and if that's all it takes to wear you out foodie you're in trouble i like the night and, you know, everything is busy. It's overwhelming. It's over. I feel overstimulated. Okay. You know what? There are people in the world that they suffer with something that the world is overstimulating. In all the time that I've been reacting to you, foodie, you've never once brought this up about being overstimulated. You've always felt awkward in public. You don't want people looking at you. You don't want people saying anything to you. But that is not the same as being overstimulated. Once upon a time when you were natter, you were doing $3,000, $4,000 worth of the nose candy. That wasn't overstimulating. That wasn't. Now she's talking about, I've, I'm, it's overstimulating. I can't handle it. It's not a matter of overstimulation. It's a matter of this one. She's been in her human hamster cage so long, stuffing herself full of food, that going out and just doing normal things, her body and her mind aren't used to it. Well, that's why you need exposure therapy to get used to actually living versus just existing. If I look off to the sides because I'm trying to think of what I need to say. Um, no, what you're trying to do is make yourself cry. You're trying to conjure up those alligator tears to make yourself look more pathetic and sad. What is it you told your subs? You said, I will manipulate the F out of you and then come on the next day and be sweet as pie and you'll eat it up. That's what you are right now, manipulative Miriam. You're trying to conjure up that sadness. You're so soulless and you're so removed from your emotions, Fraudy, that you don't know how to feel real emotions and put them out there. You have to fake feeling something. You have to think about what does sadness really feel like? How do you make yourself cry? I got to think of something sad to make myself cry because you feel sorry for nothing. I just feel so apathetic. I, I don't care about anything right now. Like I don't care about anything. 
it's like the only thing in my life that I feel that makes me happy is food. And that's why you need help. I said this a while ago in one of my reacts, y'all. Didn't I say that foodie as a person, she's got one thing that makes her happy, food. And if you're someone and you have an obsession or an addiction to something, we as people, as humans, we are motivated by happiness and reward. So if you just have one single thing that makes you happy, just one thing, not a variety of things, just one thing, and there's nothing else, of course, you're not going to want to let that one thing go because if it's not there, what else is there? Foodie's most difficult task, if she chooses to accept, is she's got to find something or a group of things that give her as much happiness as food so that she can push the food out. That's going to be really difficult for her because she doesn't look towards anything else. She doesn't do anything else. Plus, there's the added problem that food is her content. This is how she's built her empire, is on food, talking about food, eating food, attracting people to her channel that have the food fetish. The whole focus has been on food. The one thing that she's got a problem with. So to keep her income going, she's got to put the focus somewhere else. And she doesn't want to. She could easily change direction with her channel and, and make it a health journey. And that way she's still eating on camera, just not the bad stuff. But What's going on with her is she needs a complete lifestyle change, changing her attitude, changing her habits. That's a huge, huge, tall order for her. And that's something she can't do on her own. And if she tries to do it on her own, she's going to keep failing because she's not addressing all the issues she needs to all at the same time. Your whole world is food, foodie, and not even good food, bad food. You are dancing with the one thing that's hurting you and it's slowly killing you. In order to stop the cycle, you gotta stop dancing with it. You gotta stop romanticizing it. You gotta stop going to it to fulfill all your needs. Food's only job is to give you energy to go out into the world and do things. That's it. You shouldn't put any other hats on his head. But if you want to get away from food, you've got to find other things that make you happy so you can push it away and say, I don't need this anymore. I got to find healthy, positive things to replace the negative thing that I'm obsessed with. And I know that to get better and live a longer life, I have to change drastically. Yep. And dealing with the emotions that I have because of that um, is so uncomfortable that I just don't feel like I can, sometimes I don't feel like I can do it or that I want to do it. Well, that's what therapy is for. Real therapy, not YouTube therapy, real therapy going to an actual therapist, talking through your problems, talking through your issues, asking, this is what's going on today. What's wrong with me? And don't be cheap, foodie. Don't turn away from therapy just because it might be expensive. I'm sure there's lots of alternatives to getting therapy that might be cheaper. Don't use that as an excuse. I won't accept it. There are Zoom sessions. There's online things you can do. Where there's a will, there's a way. If you want to make yourself better, if you want to heal, you will find a way that works and you'll stick with it. You'll keep at it. And if you don't, well, we know what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen. Grim Reaper's got your number. 
He's just waiting for the right moment to answer the phone. When I feel like this, I feel like I just want to be passive in life and not fight and just lay down <clears throat> and just not fight. It's the best way I can describe it. So the doctor wants to put me on another pill. Um, I told him, you know, like my- Oh, well, what's the other pill? And what's it for? You're not saying. What's the other pill? Why won't you tell us? Why won't you tell us why you have to be on another pill? Blood sugars have been still in the 200s. My blood pressure is good. It's like, was like one to- if that person beeps one more time, I swear, like when I'm in this mood, everything is overstimulating. Like somebody beeping their horn is driving me crazy. You know, everybody's been asking the question since they got back from Thailand, if they moved from the original Oceanside Villa to one closer downstairs, because in the previous lives and videos that Foodie's done, you really couldn't hear the traffic noise or the working noise. Now you do hear it. And ever since then, she's been more ticked off. <laughs> and I love that for her. <laughs> no, I'm not well mentally right now. Um, Yes. You know, I know that um, I have to bring those numbers down. But like I said, right now, I just don't really care. I just don't care about anything. I just feel really tired of everything, fed up. Fed up with what, though? I thought you were having a blissful life in Kuwait, right? That's what you told us, that you got a handsomest man and he loves you. You know, that's the part I could never figure out about this whole Kuwait arc, Booty. You and Salah started talking and... You went over there to live your fantasy life. And it was your fantasy life because you wanted this tall, whatever good looking guy, younger guy to be with you. You know, you wanted the eye candy. You wanted to be able to brag, look at me, I'm 500 plus pounds and look at the guy I'm with. You know, it was an ego thing. Come on, you know it was. You knew it was an ego thing. You want to be able to get in our faces and say, where's your husband? You know, like, I've got a husband. Why don't you have one? You must be ugly if you don't have a husband. Nah, some of us are happy being single. But you want to rub it in our faces. I've got a husband and I'm living in the Middle East and my life is blissful and I'm closer to Allah. You said all the components for being happy, according to you. But you weren't happy. You're more miserable and unhealthy than you've ever been. Isn't that strange? You were living unhealthy in Canada, but it only got worse in Kuwait. Why is that? If you have the relationship that you wanted in the place that you wanted to be, why? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Because you've been living a lie and karma caught up with you even all the way over there, thousands of miles away from home. It caught up with you. Because there's nowhere you can go in the world to escape karma. The good and the innocent in your world were removed. They were put out of harm's way. And then karma got to work on you. And here we are. You are reaping what you sowed. You planted the seeds in the ground. And now there's a toxic harvest. So gather up all those poison apples and start eating them.
because you grew them in the first place. And uh, it's like going to be so much hard work. Yeah, that's because long ago you thought you were being so incredibly smart. You thought to yourself, wow, I can get on YouTube. And I can just eat and make money. You thought you were being so smart doing that. Just trading every little bit of your health for a paycheck. And you did for years. Whatever you do in life, foodie, you pay the price. For every action, there's a reaction. And for every action, there's a consequence. Could be bad. Could be good. Could be in the middle. With you, it was bad because you kept making bad choices one right after the other. And although the warning signs were there, you never woke up. Now here we are, five, six years later. All the consequences of your actions are catching up with you. You are morally bankrupt. You are spiritually bankrupt. You're in the red every which way you go. You got nothing. So it's up to you to make yourself better or make yourself worse. But you reach that critical point where your body can't take much more. It's screaming for help. And if you can't help it, then let somebody else do it. Surrender. Let people help you. Or continue on and be the defiant toddler that we know you to be. Although I think it's absolutely ridiculous to put more importance on the opinion of people on the internet than your own health, but that's just how I feel. Anyway, that's how I'm feeling, you know. I don't want to come in on here all the time and smile and just be fake about it because I'm not very happy right now. I think getting mental health help is just overwhelming. Like, I don't even know where to even start. I don't know. I feel like I'm moving in the thickest quicksand ever. So. Then get yourself a counselor or a therapist or a life coach and they'll help motivate you. Stop being cheap. You'll sit there and spend hundreds of dollars on takeout. You'll spend hundreds of dollars on something that harms your health. Why not spend the same amount of money on something that helps your health? I mean, you're motivated by reward. That's pretty obvious. So think of it this way. The reward is I get to clean up the mess in my head. It's, it, let the reward be something other than filling up your stomach. Instead of filling up your stomach, clean up the mess in your head. It's all cluttery. It's dirty. It's filthy like your old bedroom was. Clean it up. I have a lot of thinking to do. There's nothing to think about. What is there to think about? Honestly, like, are you sitting there trying to figure out a way to continue doing what you're doing on YouTube? Because that's something you've always done. Like, you know what you need to do. You know you have resources and tools, but you're always trying to find a way to make the bee monster happy. Always trying to find a way to include the unhealthy food in your life rather than try to find ways to cut it out. There's really nothing to think about, Booty. The only thing you should be thinking about is when can I get a plane ticket to get out of here to go home to Canada and get treatment? And that's simple. Just get online and look around and see when the next flight is. You know, time to go. Today is the 4th. 
maybe you're going to wait until the next YouTube payday, which isn't until the 21st. But you got plenty of time to think about what you're going to do when you get off that plane. But I'll be honest with y'all. I've already said what's going to happen when she gets back to Canada. Y'all know. Y'all know. I've already said it, but I'll say it again. For those who didn't hear it. Whew, she's going to get back to Canada. Surrounded by all the temptations. I promise you she's going to give in. Not because I want her to give in, but because she has no self-control. And Salah's not going to be there to be her control. It's going to start the moment she gets off that plane and she touches Canadian soil. I mean, just imagine. Fodi coming home from Kuwait. 13 hours. Back in Canada. Going to be coming through that airport. What's in airports, y'all? Fast food. She's going to get off that plane. First stop. Burger King to get her beloved Nashies that she hasn't had in so long. Next stop, McDonald's. Next stop, Starbucks. She's going to double fist those Starbucks drinks, cause her blood sugar to spike. She's going to go into a food coma right there in the airport or nearly go into a food coma. She's going to eat herself stupid. Then after she gets out of the airport, going straight to the dispensary. Yes, sir. And there's the possibility that because she's back in Canada, guess who she's going to be talking to again? Because she's going to be back in that neighborhood. Natter. And Natter will be happy to have her back because she was buying party favors for him. So what are the chances that she's already making phone calls to Natter and Natter's talking to her and saying, come on back, Fraudy. Come on back. We'll party with you. Come on back. He was making some good coin off of Foodie. If she comes back to Canada, he's got content again. He's got someone buying his groceries and buying the party favors. Yeah, he's, he's sweet talking her on that phone. Trust me. Trust me. We're about to get Crack Olympics 2.0 started up real soon. I was watching um, and that will be the true test that will be a true test that will be an honest crossroads for her like when she comes home you know door number one she could get on the road to true recovery but she's got to stick with it and she's got to have an iron will She's got to go to therapy. She's got to go to counseling. And she's got to go to that inpatient to fix her issues. She's got to really care about herself and do some self-love. If she doesn't do those things, then it's door number two, where she doesn't have any control at all. And she loses control. And she goes wild with the food and wild with the party favors and wild with the gummies and the shatter bears and hanging out with Natter again. I mean, that's going to be the crossroads moment. Like everybody has their own free will. So when you get back to Canada foodie, what are you going to do with yours? Are you going to continue to make yourself sick until you end up in a coffin or are you going to choose life? It's up to you. It's not up to any of us. It's up to you. Your life is yours. Do what you will with it. Life by Jen documentary. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. This part ticked me off. Hold on. We got to go back. Life by Jen documentary. Like Mr. Snowflake, he did it videos on me too and uh i like bald through the whole documentary on her because i know people think she wasn't a nice person or whatever 
We all have moments. We all are, are sometimes. Okay. When I saw her sing this in this video, I felt a little bit sick. Let me tell you why. Because it felt exploitative. Foodie has exploited her elderly cat for views, for money, for content. An elderly cat that she had for years, but she didn't care about. To the point where she neglected her, to the point of near starvation and death. An elderly cat that had nails growing into her foot pads. She let a UTI get so bad that the cat was peeing blood, mats in its fur, kidney issues, dirty infected ears, rotted teeth. Even to this day, when she feels like it, she'll talk about BBJ and exploit her. And then she also has exploited her own deceased grandmother. When it suits her, when she needs something to talk about, she'll talk about her grandmother and how much she misses her. Although I showed you guys the clip of her proudly confessing that she could easily manipulate her grandmother to do whatever she wanted. Now here she is talking about Life by Jen. And Life by Jen, as you guys know, she was a YouTuber. She had issues with food. And unfortunately, she passed away early. And here is Chantal bringing up Life by Jen. And it just feels icky. I saw this and I'm like, are you joking? Are you serious? You not only have exploited a sick elderly cat for views and attention. And your own deceased grandmother, which really you should let rest in peace. But now you're going to bring up Life by Jen? Although the documentary on Jen's been out for a while, all of a sudden you're watching it and you're bringing it up. It feels like you're exploiting a deceased person and their early demise for attention for yourself. And it's disgusting, Chantal. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame. Shame. That, that Light by Jen documentary has been out for a while. And I'm sure you've seen it way before now. So why are you talking about it now? If you got any respect, you will leave BBJ alone. Stop talking about her. You will stop talking about your deceased grandmother and you'll leave Jen alone. Show that you have at least an ounce of dignity and stop talking about those things. Stop looking for anything to exploit and anything for attention. It's not nice people. But she went through a lot of suffering. Like, she went through a lot of abuse. She went through a lot of suffering. So what are you trying to do? Are you trying to bring up these things about Jen? You're trying to use her pain and her tragedies and the things that she's been through to get attention for yourself? That's disgusting, Chantal. Leave her alone. She's no longer with us. Leave her alone. And unless you have the type of issues with food, eating disorder, food addiction that we have, you can't know the type of hardships. It's like food is literally, it can be, it's so addictive. It is. But you know what, Chantal, I, I've dealt with BED and I had one heck of a life. I'm not going to give up all of the gory details, but let's just say I've dealt with different kinds of pain, including abuse, different kinds of abuse. I've had some really horrific things happen to me, but I did not let those things define me. I fought through it. I didn't let the horse ride me. I rode the horse. Even if you had a hard childhood or growing up or if you had traumatic events you can go to the therapy and you can rise above that pain you can work through it and you can get on top of things it's just a matter of do you want to get past these things or do you want to not get past it so yeah jen 
I don't know a whole lot about Jen if she went through a horrible childhood. I am so sorry for that. That's very unfortunate. But that wasn't your childhood. That wasn't you. You've all, you said on camera, I'm a spoiled brat. You got what you wanted and you were a bad child. You were a troublemaker. You bullied your own sister. So Jen's life is not necessarily your life. But even if you had something similar happen to you, uh, you're an adult. There's therapy. There are resources. There are people that can help you. So why aren't you using them? What's your excuse now? Like drugs, but unlike drugs, we need food to survive. Yeah, and that was the part about BED that I struggle with. A lot of other addictions, they're not necessarily things you need to survive. Food is the one thing you need to survive. You can't stop consuming it. So if you have a problem with food, how do you cut it out if you can't completely cut it out? That was the question that I didn't have the answer to for the longest. And then I figured out that you have to repair your relationship to food. You have to look at it the right way. You have to treat it the right way. You have to give it the respect it deserves and you cannot misuse it. It took me six years to find that answer. You know, you, you eat to live, not live to eat, foodie. And it's just so hard. And it's scary because I'm on that path. Yeah, you've been on that path. But you put, the thing is, you put yourself there. All along, all this time you've been on your channel, there have been people saying, we want you to get healthy. You've had people in your comments and in your live chat saying, go to therapy. Get healthy food. Do what you need to do to be healthy. Have you listened to everything they said? No. You would act like you were going to get healthy. And then you turn around the next day and do a mukbang with unhealthy food. But you can't say, oh, I can't do the healthy eating on my channel because I'll lose everybody. No, you won't. If you did the healthy eating and the lifestyle changes, you would just get a whole different crowd that are there for the right reasons versus the wrong ones. If you lose people off your channel, you're only losing the people that are there to watch you die. And I know that's harsh to say, but it's a doggone truth. All those food fetish people, they're there just encouraging you to eat. They're there to watch you die. They want to see you get sick. But you have the power, seeing as it's your body, that you can say, screw off. I'm not dying for your entertainment. But you've never said that. You're busy over there catering to them and their interest. Well, guess what? If something happens to you and you end up in the hospital, you know what they're going to do? They're not going to cry overly long over you. They're going to go find some other YouTuber that's morbidly obese or not obese that satisfies their fetish and they'll forget all about you. Your only importance to them is in what you give them, not who you are. You need to know that there's a difference with that. That those who watch you that have that fetish, it's not about valuing you as a person. It's about what they get out of you. And what they're getting out of you, it's not that great. Anyway. people on the internet are just so in life in general they're so disgusting towards people with issues like this you don't get it you know <laughs> just don't get it you know foodie if you want other people to care about you first you have to care about you and if you say something you have to back it up because you are such a liar and manipulator Nobody believes you. No one believes you. And you caused that to happen by lying about everything. Everything. All the time. Hiding things. 
you have zero good credit with anybody nobody believes you nobody believes in you you caused that to happen And you talk about how people are cruel to people online with issues with food. But yet, wasn't it you that have been on your channel the last several years exploiting your issue with food? Instead of treating the problem, giving it a job to make money for you? Aren't you an addict who's found a forum to exploit your addiction? and look for enablers, yeah, that was also you. And you don't expect criticism for that? You made the choice not to heal what was wrong, to exploit what was wrong and make it worse. And you just let it go and let it go and let it go. And here we are. And after all that lying and all that manipulating, here we are. You're at the crossroads. So which road are you gonna choose? True recovery, which is gonna take every bit of strength that you got inside and out. Or are you gonna be passive and say, I don't care. I'm gonna let what's gonna happen, happen. You decide your own fate. We don't even get it. Anyway, I'm sorry that this um, video took like a bit of a turn for the worse. Um, this is how I'm feeling today. So I think I'm going to just log off for the day. That's it. So that's my way in. Um, so now, you know, I'm not lying about the scale. Anyway, I just, I just, I don't, I don't believe that scale. Sorry. I just don't, I don't believe it. No nope. care what these irrelevant people think, but I'm just, there you go. Okay. That was easy to uh, show Listen, you. If you, All right, I'm just, if you didn't care what we thought, why is it when you got called out for your weight, you immediately ran to the doctor's office to get weighed? <laughs> so you do care what we think. It's going to um, end the video here. And I don't know. That's it. See ya. Okay, so that was the video. Yeah, hold on a second. I got a booger cat in my arms. <laughs> Hold on, let me just remove this. Oh, stop screen. Okay. Okay, there's Booger Cat. Kitty kid. So yeah, that was the video. So she's she says she's coming back to Canada someday. I don't know if it's just like wishful thinking in her head because she's miserable or if she's doing that on purpose to keep everything vague so that we won't know when she leaves. But according to Foodie, she's coming back to Canada. But that could easily change with the next video. She's done this before. Like, acted like she wanted to come back to Canada and the next day said, I'm here with my handsomest man and I'm not leaving. So, maybe she can't stay in Kuwait because of her health issues and she can't get her blood sugar under control and maybe she's not allowed to stay. But we will see, y'all. We will see. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this react. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you all so much for staying and hanging out with me. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. I've got a very busy day today with all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and I got to take care of Booker. Kitty. Say hi. Hi. Kitty. All right. I'm out, y'all. <laughs> Bye.